It's time now for the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement and everything in between. Featuring uh, the professional home inspector that we have every week at this time who tells us that every house has a story. Jack Milne. Good morning, Jack. How you doing today? Hey, I'm great, Barry. It's, um, do you believe it's t- two weeks from now? No. We're going to be celebrating a new year? Nope. Can't, can't believe it. I don't know what happened to the old year. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think as you get older, the years just go a little bit faster. I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, the Milnes are right in the middle of this uh, mayhem again. Uh, we had Thanksgiving a couple of weeks ago. We're going to have a Christmas uh, in another 10 days. Uh you know, so just when we got done cleaning the house and making a mess, it gives us a little bit of a reprieve and, you know, to try to go do the shopping and try to, you know, get the Christmas decorations up and switching gears completely. And uh, and then, again, be ready to have uh, a bunch of people at the table once more. Okay. Well, it's coming again. I have to ask you a question. Are you a white light guy or a colored light guy? Um, you know what I am, Barry? I'm a simple guy. <laughs> I go. like candles in the window. Ah, uh, that's easy. That's that's what I. That, that's that's the easy easy way. But it's beautiful. It is, and um, you know, I, I I make the trek, you know, to the attic over my garage. And I bring down all these bins. You know, thank God that's all I have to do. I let my bride take care of most of the decorating. Um, and uh, I try to sit back and actually do a little bit of relaxing during, the, I find, the most stressful time of year. Um, and then, uh, you know, when it's all said and, <laughs> said and done, I, she packs them up, and I throw them back through the attic stairs one more time. There you go. Uh, so I, I, I like Thanksgiving. I wish it was a little bit earlier uh, in the year. Um, you know, I think September would be good. Uh, but, uh, you know, within a month, you have these two major, major festive occasions. That's right. And it yeah. doesn't give you a whole lot of time in between. So, um, but it is what it is. They've been doing it this way for a long time, so it's, it's hard to uh, change tradition. Oh, well, but, uh, we're, we're, they're, we're, they're not going to change it for you or me. Let's, we'll, just, we'll just have to go along with it. Uh, yeah, grin and bear, <laughs> grin and bear. But speaking of you, Barry, uh, you gave me an idea a couple weeks ago about DIY disasters. Well, this is dedicated to me because I could write a book about some of my DIY disasters. So uh, I said, hey, Jack, why don't you do a show about it? Well, it doesn't take long to put the pen to paper, and uh, and here we go. So that's a, that's the topic, the DIY disasters. Uh, we've can't all wait. had them. So <laughs> before we kick in, of course, I always want to thank my sponsors because without them, I you know wouldn't be able to enjoy this time with Barry every Sunday as well as with you all. So let's change the topic a little bit. We're going to start with Tri County Inspection Company first. I'm going to give you a few phone numbers, guys. Uh, we do work in 15 counties. Uh, for the Bucks Montgomery County area, 215-295-2030. In the Lehigh Valley, 610-346-7880. North Jersey, 609-882-5188. And Delaware County, 610-296-2004. BrainFlushGear.com. Again, uh, I, I have spoken to the art director, and uh, I want to thank you folks for reaching out to Kevin and uh, placing some of those uh, pre-Christmas orders. But, you know, there's nothing like shopping at the last minute, guys. But knowing Kevin will help you through it. Pest Blaster. Um, again, they deal with radon testing, mold testing, wood-destroying insect evaluations and treatment, as well as pest removal. And their number's great. It's 215-295-5555. Burrow Exterminating. Now, Glenold in Pennsylvania, again, termite radon testing. 610-586-5640. And then Bucksmont Inspections. Again, they do on-site sewage evaluations. They do treatments. They do repairs and design. So if you're up there in the upper parts of these counties or outer, outer part of those counties, six, uh, they're at 215-669-4213. So a quick visit to the email box, Scott from Yardley. By the way, my hometown uh, sent me this message a few weeks ago. I heard your show about fall prep. 
um, after cleaning my gutters for what appears to be the umpteenth time, uh, what was the name of the gutter guards that you like? So, Scott, it's easy. It's called Leaf Relief Gutter Guards. Uh, usually installed by a professional gutter, um, 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 I guess you call them mechanic, um, and, they, and they come in anywhere from four to six foot strips. They go up and under the shingle tab and then mechanically fasten to the lip of the uh, gutter um, with uh, hex head screws. I put them on my house when I replaced my roof two years ago, and this whole fall I went up there with my leaf blower and I cleared my gutters out, not only my house but for my garage, probably in about 20 minutes. Um, it was incredible, and uh, they work well. Uh, I've been through a few snows with them over the past few years, especially last year. No ice damming, no icicles. Uh, I've tried them all, Scott, and uh, I think the Leaf Relief is the best one out there. Um, you probably will not get them at the box stores. You might have to let your computer do the walking, but they're out there for you. So, folks, any questions, any time, please feel free to email me at thehousewhisperer um, at gmail.com um, or... Uh, all the archives are available, uh, which is now probably about 125 shows deep at thehousewhispershow.com. And uh, always, 24-7, you, know, you can podcast the shows at www.dbam.com. So let's dive into today's topic. It's DIY disasters, and we've all had them. So before I start, I, I have to say most disasters start out due to uh, the rushing of the task and impatience. And believe me, I know we've been there. And, and I've been there because all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to get a few hours off. The bride comes up and says, Jack, you know, before the next hour, I need to get this and this and this and this and this and this and this done. And then all of a sudden, that little hour you're planning on actually taking a break, uh, all of a sudden got uh, overfilled. Yeah, I've been there, so, done that. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. And. You know, we've already had a difficult work week, and it's now the weekend, and the job jar list is aflame, what I like to call it, for all the things that need to get done before Sunday at 1 or Sunday at 4. And believe me, you know, I, I, I've, I've been there, I've done it. You run around like a madman, you grab your tools and you take off. But uh, before you, you, know, you start, you actually have to kind of sit back and take a deep breath. You just want to inhale and you want to exhale slowly. And, and I will do this, you know, uh, right the first time, I think. But now the fun begins. So uh, I want to talk about Kelly, my neighbor. Uh, Kelly uh, moved out of my neighborhood probably about 20 years ago. Uh, but this is a fella who always had his hands busy doing something. And I saw him, and he told me this story where... Uh, on his electric oven, the rear burner um, of the stove didn't work. So he said he goes down to the electric panel, and he shuts off the breaker labeled range. And then he touches the 220 line. Now, it was still hot or active. And, and basically what happened is he fused his fingers together. Oh. Uh, yeah, the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger. So, you know, I didn't know that happened, but I see him with a cast on and asked him, what happened? And he told me that the circuit labeled range was act it was actually the air conditioning breaker. And you know, when he got home from the hospital he said he didn't even kiss his wife. He went down to the basement you know, to see what happened is so the moral and I'm gonna have a lot of morals with today's stories, always label your panel box and don't guess. Uh it it, it one, it could hurt and worse, it could kill you. Um, so we want you to be safe, uh, and we don't want you to be sorry. So, you know, if you're doing anything with electrical folks, verify, verify, verify. You can buy what we call a tick tracer to see if that receptacle is still hot or that line is still hot in Kelly's um, uh, circumstance. Or a circuit tester is a plug-in device, so you can make sure that if you want to put in a switch or you want to put in a new receptacle that the power is, in fact, off. Don't mess with electricity. Uh, that's the moral of that story. But let's move to plumbing, DIY. How many small plumbing parts are there? Th there's a gazillion, okay? 
And, and you know, you, you get into this job where all I want to do is replace the trap, which is made of copper under my garbage disposal. I mean, how difficult can it be? So you grab hold of the wrench, and the coupling breaks free, and so does the corroded copper drain line. Now, not only does the garbage disposal fitting need to be replaced, but so does part of the drain line that extends below the floor. And so all of a sudden, you know, what you thought was going to be maybe about a 20-minute task uh, now can render the job uh, inoperable you, because you can't use the kitchen sink and you can't get to that fitting that's underneath the floor. So you're going to have to call a plumber. And you know it's Saturday at 10 in the morning. You know, you're ready to, you know, move on to something else. The bride turns to you and says, well, what do you mean I can't use the sink? So now all of a sudden you, you think of backups. Well, we can use a laundry sink, honey, or you can go upstairs to the hall or bathroom or downstairs to the pad room. But, you know, now I can't get the plumber because, you know, they, they're going to charge your firstborn, you know, to come out and make the repair on a weekend. So it looks like it might be Tuesday or Wednesday you know, before the plumber can go ahead and, and, and make this repair. Uh, I can get an appointment with my doctor faster than I can with my plumber, I can tell you that. <laughs> it is incredible, and uh, y- and even I have contacts, and I'm put on hold sometimes. Uh, we, we, have, we have a break to take, Jack. We're going to do that, and I, l- I love this topic, uh, do-it-yourself disasters. And I've had, I, I've had plenty of them myself, and you're, you're telling some great stories. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with Jack Mill and the House Whisperer with more DIY disasters on WWDB, things that you shouldn't do. Stay right where you are. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586 5640 or send an email request to boroughinspects at verizon.net that's 610-586-5640 or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net specially created t-shirts by brainflushgear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport brainflushgear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles wave runners surfboards snowmobiles or skateboards it can be priceless they offer custom artwork including silk screening transfers and embroidery speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-66. 94213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. 
Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. Okay, we're back with Jack Milne. Today's topic, do-it-yourself disasters, and there are plenty of them. Jack, you're going to tell us some more, right? Absolutely, Barry. I'm full of them today. I know. <laughs> now, before we leave plumbing completely, request of your plumber to replace any components with plastic, be it PVC or ABS, because today, with the fittings as they are, everything's hand-tight. Nothing has to be soldered or welded. Um, <clears throat> so go to plastic. This way, in case something fails in the future, I'll say eight times out of ten, you can do it yourself. Moving on, insulation. According to the experts, every attic should have at least 12 inches of insulation so I can protect my home from the utility companies. One of the things I hate to do is pay PICO, the gas bill, or any other utility bill because my goal in life is just not to pay them much at all. And the best way to do that is by properly insulating your attic. So today's codes call for a minimum of nine inches of insulation. Now, who sets the codes? Utility company. I love it. So I go a little bit more. This region calls for an R factor of 40, which is 12 inches. But the, the, uh, the utility company says, oh, no, 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 nine inches is fine. Uh, when you go to reinsulate your attic, what you should do is figure out the square footage and then add 10% uh, so that when you go to that big box hardware store and you buy unfaced rolled insulation, uh, you can then start the task. Now, you know, remember, it has to be unfaced, no paper, no foil when you're putting it on top of existing blown-in insulation, be it fiberglass or cellulose, or existing Pink Panther. Now... The problem is, is that you buy these big tubes and you look in the closet where the attic hatch is and it's roughly two by two and physically you're three by three. So what you have to do is try to cram not only yourself into that small opening, but you have to get these tubes of insulation into your attic as well. Now you can also buy rolled insulation, which tends to squash a little bit better than the tubes. I, I have a lot of anxiety with putting clients in attics because, you know, if, if they don't know what they're doing, they can potentially get hurt. Now, I've seen clients who say, you know, I've never seen my attic. I've never seen my attic without plywood before. So what you have to do is you have to take the plywood out. So you're going to have to get your mask on. You're going to get your long sleeve shirt, your eye protection, and um, and then start to cut up the planks, you know, the boards, so you can get them out before you insulate. Because otherwise, you're you're wasting your time. What you do after that's all done, you take your first step and you slip off the off the joist and you land in your daughter's bedroom. Now, if you're lucky, you may land on the bed. Um, but if she's doing her homework, you know, you're going to scare the bejesus out of her. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the job you're ready to start now comes to an abrupt halt. Now, because you've now made a newer, large opening rather than that two-by-two-foot two opening that you had to cram your body into, you may as well take full advantage of the, extra, of the mistake you made, open the insulation and the joists even further, get the new insulation up there, 
finish the task at hand, but then guess what? You're going to have to call a sheetrocker because he's going to have to go ahead and patch your ceiling. He's going to have to uh, pry, um, you got to uh, tape it, spackle it, sand it, spackle again, sand it, and repaint. Uh, I do ask that you be extremely careful, uh, and if you if you don't have a comfort level being in a, in a closed environment, uh, you can always hire professionals. Budget at least a third more than what you bought at the at the, at the box store. But again, years ago when I did my insulation, I, spa I paid about $1,200. I did it myself. I saved three tanks of fuel oil uh, my first winter. So like anything else, folks, if you're not uh, familiar uh, with the task, don't do it. Uh, my advice is hire others. For the next one, uh, I can hear it now. Okay. Dad, my baseball's in the gutter up there. And your son points not to the lower gutter, but to the upper gutter. And I know, you know, the ladder in my garage is not quite long enough to reach. I want to help my son, so I go to my neighbor's house whose ladder may reach. He asks me if, uh, if, if I know how to use the ladder. Of course, my ego takes over and says, absolutely. So I muscle it home, uh, and like a pole vaulter, I plant it in the earth and extend it to the heavens. My son says, Dad, I think it's right about here. But as I look uh, in those puppy eyes, I know that the ball should be in the approximate area where he points. With much chagrin, I started climbing the rungs, not looking up or down, but straight ahead, so I don't really have to think about what I'm doing. And finally, step after step, higher and higher I go, and get to the gutter and look both left and right. I see the ball and it's four feet to my left. It's slightly out of reach. I'm right-handed, and, you know, so I know, I understand my comfort is to the right side, not so much on the left, and I, and I may be able to reach it if I really stretch to my left. The bad angel says, go for it. You know, you can get it. The good angel says, look, you know, you got to the top. Why not go back down? Move your ladder over to the left by four feet, rescale the ladder, and grab the ball. Well, as the person on the ladder, you mull it over for a, for a minute, and you stretch one more time, the ball is about still three inches away. <laughs> I ask, do not extend further than the comfort, because if your ladder slides, you're going to fall that 20 to 25 feet, and no matter you know, what you think, that ball is not worth the $4. So, moral, don't let the bad angel get you in trouble. And always question the good angel. Personal care always wins over the task at hand. Finally, personal tools. The sawzall, the radial arm saws, the circular saws, drills, planers. All these tools are made to cut and shape wood, but can also remove fingers so fast you don't even realize they're gone until the pain sets in. And I can tell you, folks, you know, too many of my friends, contractors for years, even my dad's friends have lost digits uh, or altered them enough um, that the hands never worked as well as, you know, they had in the past. And, and you know, and, and these are professionals. And they only had that one moment where everything was so routine that the event happened. And the moral is no matter how much you are as a novice or even an expert you may con that you may consider yourself to be, in a fleeting moment, the task or your life has been changed, and it wasn't by accident. And 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 you know the the moral. And I started started this at the beginning of the show is you have to slow down. You want to think it through. You need the right tools, and you need the knowledge to do the task at hand. And and if you if you do it right the first time, at the end of the day, I I, I tell this to my kids stupid hurts and it can last for a long long time so uh over the past few weeks as you all know i've been doing my family room um i bought this awesome piece of um what they call romanesque glass uh for my transom it took a month to get it i got all my tools ready to go i put the caulk in to hold the glass and as i went down to grab the pneumatic nailer I, I, I stepped down, I turned around, the glass fell out. It fell uh, about eight feet. It broke into a zillion oh, pieces. 
I scarred my brand new hardwood floor, and you know, I didn't think it through because I thought that the caulk would hold it in place. Uh, I probably should have used tape. Even painter's tape would have held that glass in place until uh, I, I, I got the pieces of wood I needed, which were unfortunately too far away. And in a moment, uh, the seventy-nine dollars came crashing to the floor. I'm, I'm fortunate that the, my glass guy ordered a larger sheet than I needed. I was able to call him on the following Monday. Uh, I got the piece that literally within 15 minutes of the order. And then you know what, folks? I took my own medicine. I slowed the process down. I wasn't waiting until you know the football game because I wanted to get it done. So this time I took, put everything close by. I did get out that painter's tape. I taped it at the top. I taped it at the sides. I put the base piece on. I put the top piece on after uh, that holds it in place after removing the tape. Put my finished base piece down. I put my two side pieces on, removed the tape, and it turned out beautiful. Hey, Jack, I love these stories. Uh, we're out of time, but I, I, I think we have to – there's another show I have to suggest to you. What's that, Barry? It would be called, well, you know, you you talk frequently about DIY. How about a show DDIY, which stands for Don't Do It Yourself, <laughs> <laughs> which would be directed at me, too. Ah, well, you know, uh, I can probably come up with something on that, but, folks, I think bottom line is if you're not familiar, don't attempt it. Uh, you can read it in books and... Uh, but until you actually put your hands to those tools, if you're not familiar with it, I would play it safe and learn from the contractor of which you've just hired. And maybe next time you can do it yourself. So in closing, folks, it's Sunday. Uh, please spend time with friends and family. And I look forward to seeing you next week on The House Whisperer. Absolutely. Uh, this is, I, I, lo I love your stories. Uh, tune in again next week for another edition of The House Whisperer Show with professional Home Inspector Jack Mill. You can listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com, or you can go to our podcast right here at www.dbam.com. I'm Barry Reisman. Thanks for listening to WWDB Talk 860. Oh, God, now every